now I would like to uh, call Dr. Mona uh, for her session about AI mass detection of COVID-19. Uh, Dr. Mona is a clinical, uh, Dr. Mona Kazim uh, is a dear colleague and she is a clinical radiologist with over 19 years in the field of radiology. She is lecturer at the Medical Diagnostic Imaging Department at University of Sharjah College of Health Science. Uh, she has 10 years experience in radiology department and trauma center uh, in the DHA and nine years at the Imperial College of London. Her primary interest in radiology research is general radiology, vascular and general ultrasound. Uh, welcome Dr. Muna and please share your screen. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Muna. Good evening, everyone. And um... It's my pleasure to be part of the uh, lovely department with all my colleagues, very supportive, interesting. And uh, today I'm talking about, it's a research project uh, done um, by me and my colleague, Dr. Rula Sharqi from Harwood University. She's the engineer, I'm the radiologist. It's about uh, uh, mass detection of uh, COVID-19. As we know, uh, by today, we reach a 58 million case of uh, uh, COVID-19 and many country trying to emerge and uh, uh, relieve the lockdown, the total lockdown. Like uh, As till now, we heard a lot about vaccine, but not uh, one of them it's uh, launched in the market, not of them 100%. There is no treatment for COVID. So the only way uh, to control is uh, early detection, admission the patient and prevent the spread of this virus. Our, uh, we still have many uh, testing kit, like we the PCR, uh, the blood test, which is, I think now they stop it because it has a lot of positive, uh, false po uh, positive and false neg uh, negative uh, results. Uh, so all those tests are not to be 100% accuracy. Uh, the most important rules is the radiology. Of course, uh, not all uh, the cases will have, especially in early presentation, they will not have uh, positive uh, chest x-ray unless late in the disease and complication uh, and CT not, it's the best and the gold stand for those cases but they try to avoid it uh, unless uh, elderly uh, complicated case they do the CT this is the policy in UAE I don't know about uh, in Europe or different countries so uh, it's not the first line of diagnosis uh, so we, we try to uh, find something convenient, easy, uh, can detect a patient uh, uh, in mass detection, like a patient, uh, individual in, uh, in a school, in laboratory, in universities. Uh, uh, they found also, as we know, this virus very nasty, a lot of cases without any symptoms, but when they do x-ray, there are findings, but without temperature, without any symptoms, there is lung lesions without any uh, obvious symptoms on the patient. So this uh, proposed, what we try to do, it is uh, composed of two things. It is the face recognition or identifying the individual, plus a thermal camera, which will be focused on the uh, thoracic area from the uh, base of the neck up to the diaphragm, taking a thermal image and uh, uh, we'll try to have like a booth or a, a platform, a small, we place it in school and factories. So the patient will enter and we will have the identification tools. In UAE, we have the Emirates ID, which is linked to uh, interior ministry, to the uh, Ministry of Health. It's one system. So this uh, ID, it is connected to the, this is as you, uh, Dr. Naisa, talk about the patient uh, uh, consent form and this, it will be uh, uh, confidentiality for the uh, individual. Uh, as all of them, uh, they have this information with the interior ministry. So as the patient enter the booth, we'll, uh, we'll have the camera to recognize the face, 
they can use the fingerprint, which is connected to the uh, Emirates ID, or they can use only the Emirates ID or the any ID they have, the passport could work. This is the first step of the booth. Then the uh, thermal camera will try to focus on the chest, take an image for the uh, uh, chest and identify if there is increase in temperature at the uh, chest region. We found it's uh, quite sufficient and we detect uh, um, many cases. It is very convenient, very easy, no need uh, uh, for person to be available. It's all automatic, it's a quick, and of course the main thing, there's no radiation, which is the, the, the best thing about it. The result we found, uh, actually we did the study on uh, 30 uh, patients only, they were admitted to Rashid Hospital. All those patients, they were uh, tested positive, of course, we had five uh, individual, uh, they are negative uh, COVID, they were our control. And the uh, 30 patient, the positive identified by uh, PCR test, also chest X-ray, and some of them they did CT scan to uh, 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 confirm the diagnosis of COVID, of course. Um, as we know, uh, the, the basic of this study came from the uh, basic physiology or biology. We know if there is any uh, infection or any uh, trauma to the cell, there is uh, the uh, release of the inflammatory modules or the cytokines, which will uh, release the, from the cell of the, uh, or the uh, infection virus and will cause uh, vasodilatation and increase the blood supply to the area. And this is, could be the cause for the increase the temperature in the lung. Uh, this is a normal uh, chest X-ray and this is the thermal image for this person. Uh, we can see it's only 34 degree and we cannot see the orange. Here is the, it has increased temperature. And here is the cursor where we point and see exactly where is it. Our study is still under construction because we're still doing more. The problem we're facing is the consent from the patient, to be honest. A lot of them, in, um, when, especially if they are admitted, they are serious cases. So uh, we're just struggling with the consent form. This patient is positive bilateral, we can see. Uh, there is a uh, ground class uh, infiltration of both lower uh, and mid zone of the lung. And here we can see there is a sign of increased temperature uh, on the patient. Another case we have, this is bilateral base also and with the significantly obliteration of the CP angle. And we found also significant increase in the temperature and it's 37 in this patient. Also, this is another example here, which is uh, affecting the mid lower, uh, the mid and both lower zones. And we can see in the thermal image, it's quite sensitive. Uh, the, the chest thermal imaging, it's quite a quick, safe, it is a convenient method. It's actually not a diagnostic tool, to be honest. It's for mass detect or suspected case, try to eliminate the spread of those uh, cases in the uh, society. Uh, uh, we, we use uh, uh, the artificial intelligence uh, to correlate the identity of the patient with the, uh, uh, with the thermal uh, camera during the screen. Uh, no need uh, for a uh, uh, person to be present in. Uh, it is uh, early, uh, early investigation. We can keep all the da data of the patient, uh, age and the, uh, the thermal image, and they can keep it for later on if the patient is uh, diagnosed to be as a reference for the uh, radiology department to compare with the previous status of the patient. 
And the, this is the salute for all of them. Uh, we wish we can add something uh, in the radiology and um, celebrate the next year with them. Thank you very much. Any question? Hi, can I ask one quick question on this Please. one? Hi, um, Dr. Nassaro, the, um, what's the sensitivity and specificity have you found throughout your studies uh, with the thermal imaging when you correlate it with the either the CT or the X-ray findings? Uh, you know, when you correlate, yeah. Yes, okay, thank you. Uh, actually, we compared it with the uh, chest X-ray only. We didn't uh, compare with the CT, it was not available. Uh, we're not. We're still working on that, but all the cases which was positive, we found there is, actually we did 30 cases till now, and all the 30 cases were positive and we had a, a positive thermal imaging with it, all the 30, but they ask more a number of cases to, uh, you know, 30, it's a small number. So we need to add more cases. That's great, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much, Dr. Muna. You're welcome. Wishing your project all the best, inshallah. It will add. It will add lots of uh, value, Inshallah. and it will open. It will open uh, lots of doors for the future. Thank you very much. Is there any other question, please? Can I just make a, a comment? Because one of the participants actually wrote a question about the shielding of heat from other sources. So, uh, was it easy to? Uh, get thermal images, what kind of camera did you use? How many images did you take? Did you average a few images? Uh, do you have a special room for that? Or, you know, what about? Uh... Yeah, we did, we did like a platform uh, that I will uh, just show you that. It is still virtual. We didn't uh, start it yet. It's a proposal to start the... Uh... So we, uh, we make like a cabin so the uh, individual will enter and the this one so uh, one by one will enter of course they will first identify either by uh, face recognition so we have all the data for those people uh, actually it's connected to the interior ministry so uh, you know all people here they have their emirates id they have the uh, their fingerprints all connected to it in one system so, and the data will be uh, uh, connected to the interior ministry. And then the thermal image will take the uh, image for the chest and the area will be from the uh, base of the neck till the diaphragm. So we'll concentrate, we will not take like, you know, there are now cameras in the mall, but they will take the whole body. We'll try to concentrate on the chest area, not the whole body. Thank you, thank you. Could I just Thank quickly you. ask one last thing, if, if possible? Yes, please. Yes, please. Um, do you know all those 30 patients which you have taken through, these were the ones who consented um, yes. at this stage. Uh, did you manage to find anything else, like the incidental findings um, with regards to the other infections, which... Yes, that's what I want to... Yes. Uh, the thermal camera cannot differentiate between any other type of pneumonia and COVID. So any reaction, any infection to the lung, it will be increase the temperature. But of course, the best, I'm not saying it is a, a tool to diagnose COVID. It's a tool to eliminate the cases and make the, 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 the diagnosis uh, more focused like this patient. He might have any other types of infection. Could be any other type of pneumonia, but we can know there is a lung change in this patient. No, oh, I was thinking from the point of view that it can uh, it can reduce the radiation dose to the patient in a way that it's aiding to to go for any sort of diagnostic imaging. So thermal just picking up any infection. So yeah, unnecessary, yeah. Um, you know, like the CT or unnecessary X-ray will not be performed if it's not being picked up on the thermal. So it can save the radiation dose as well to the patient well, in a way. So I, I, I mentioned it is, of course, radiation free, but it helped not to spread. As you know, a lot of pay, uh, with the PCR, we got many uh, false negative and false positive. And those false negative, they are more danger to the society because it's false negative. They go out and they spread the infection. 
So hoping this one more sensitive, even if it's not COVID, but you know, uh, the patient, what we're planning to, because it's connected to the patient information also, he might uh, receive a text message saying, please, can you um, do further investigation in the form of PCR or something? Your query suspected of COVID because we found some changes in the thermal. We're still working on the project. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Munas. Thank you for the uh, participant contribution also.